Hi, this is Christopher Boucher, and I'm going to demonstrate a chi-square goodness of fit a hypothesis test. And this is one of the simplest ones in that it's a dice problem, and uh, usually it ends up you that you roll one die. So this is an early on um, type of uh, question or, or example that you would see in a textbook or any class uh, describing how to do this process with the goodness of fit testing. Okay, we'll get started. Acme Dice uh, tests a handful of dice from each lot of dice produced. Joe, the dice tester, has rolled one uh, six-sided die 60 times and obtained the following results. So, of course, this guy is going to roll the dice um, a bunch of times, in this case 60 times, and he wants to see if um, it appears to be fair. So if it's fair, then we would expect the observe to, um, we would expect he would observe an equal amount of um, outcomes for each side. That would be a fair die. You would assume that it's not weighted or anything like that. Perform a hypothesis test at a 5% level of significance to see if the dice appears to be fair. I put appears because with hypothesis testing, we're not proving as much as we're trying to see if it matches up with what we thought. Okay, so as I said before, we want to see if these outcomes are within the range of normal or if they're so far away from the null, meaning uh, status quo, that there's got to be something going on and then maybe we'd want to retest. Do it again. Okay, I'll list out the data here. So this is the same to save time. I made up this, this uh, table and it makes it a lot easier for us. Okay. So this is the same data right here. It's just moved down. And then we go over and we look at PX. Now PX would be the probability of each of these outcomes. So um, we go and we list these out. Now because it is a six-sided die, and remember probability only goes from zero uh, to one, then this is going to be a fraction. And when you work this out, the way that you get this, it would just be the simple calculation you end up um, with 100 divided by uh, 6 and you get 16.66. Um, uh, um, if we want to put this as a percentage, uh, which probability is usually you know that way, we would do 1 divided by 6 and our probability is for each side 0.166 we could say or about 16. Okay. So let's say 0 0.166, 0 0.166, 0 0.166, not a lot of room on this. And it's the same for all of them. That's one of the characteristics, one of the, uh, one of the nice things about this type of problem is they're all the same. That's, that's uh, one of the ways this is easy. The next thing is the expected, and this is this is why this is easy as well. This is um, nice because our total rolls or tests that we had, total of the observed is uh, 60, and when we divide that up um, and spread that out and multiply 60 by 0.166, we end up getting for expected, which is what we expect to get, um, with a fair die, it would be this a really nice, easy number. Sometimes expected is not a round number, so we get 10 for each one. It's a nice problem. So, it's very important when you do any type of chi square goodness of fit test that these two columns right here are the observed and the expected. Usually, sometimes it could be the, the O and the E is. Um, to make sure that that's that's everything's correct, no um, writing mistakes in there, because from this point we could put this in our calculator, and if you have a problem with one of these, your calculator doesn't know um, know anything different. So it'll you'll end up checking your answer, and you, and you'll be uh, getting an answer in the calculator that matches your mistake. So this is where you you really want to make sure these columns are right. A couple other things about these columns real quick since it's uh, kind of an early example. So this equals 60 
And this equals, um, other than rounding errors or uh, lack of precision because you're not going all the way out because this goes on forever, uh, this should equal one. And then this should equal 60. So we have uh, the total, total, and one. So it's that's one way to check, to see if you're on the right track. Okay, so let's start, I'm gonna start filling these in. I have some of it calculated out so that you don't have to wait. Um, let's see, some of these are easy though. Um, what we're doing is subtracting uh, the expected from the observed, and that shows us the difference. Okay, so we have negative six, negative three, six, negative two, negative two, seven. Okay, and then in the next one, all that we're doing is squaring the um, the difference. And it ends up, now when you do this, make sure you put, uh, let's say you do this in your calculator, make sure you put parentheses around any negatives. Because sometimes your calculator won't um, do it properly and you end up with a uh, negative answer sometimes which isn't isn't uh, correct so make sure that you do parentheses um, before you square it okay I'm gonna write these out let's see because this should be anytime you square something it should be positive that's part of the reason why they do this squaring especially with standard deviation okay Four, four, and forty-nine. Okay, so we're getting that in the last step. Now you can actually skip a couple steps if you wanted to. You could skip this column um, if you wanted to, but I've adopted that that I always do these problems this way. So I found some examples where other people will end up skipping this this column, which would be fine if you want to do it. But if you want to do the easy way. Um, and have everything laid out, I recommend having this column. So this last one is, um, so this is the R squared, and then it's divided by the expected. So we go back to the expected and square it. Now because this, this problem has really nice expected values, this ends up being easy too. So we end up just putting a decimal point kind of in front of um, all of our answers. That's 3.6, this will be 0 0.4, 0 0.4, and then 4.9. And then um, once we add these all up, we will have our uh, calculated chi-square statistic for this test. Now, we don't have the critical value for the hypothesis part, but we'll have the calculated. And so we can write something like this, a little sigma. Um, say x um, squared and um, of all of them and it ends up being um, 13.8 so 13.8 so this is our calculated statistic or calculated uh, chi-square okay so now let's go and we're going to calculate our um, critical value. And first, you know, I'm going to draw a picture as well here. I don't draw these that well, but we, I always recommend drawing a picture, especially when we use what they call the rejection zone method. I always recommend drawing a picture. Make sure that we've got everything on the camera here. Okay. So. Um, now we're going to go and we're going to get the calculated uh, critical value. And to do that, we are going to um, use degrees of freedom and things like that. Okay, so we have um, six categories. So we have six categories. So our DF, it always equals uh, the number of categories and then uh, minus uh, one unless we have uh, what we call uh, estimated um, estimated parameters. Now, uh, it ends up being that when we estimate a parameter, it's a statistic. But when we have things such such as we're we're estimating the lambda, we're estimating the uh, sample mean, or we're estimating standard deviations and things like that, 
then we end up um, actually subtracting the number of estimations that we have of the actual estimated parameters, we subtract it. So we decrease the degrees of freedom more. So, but for us, we have six categories and then um, we're subtracting by one. We always subtract by one in this case. So we end up with five. So we are going to, we're looking for degrees of freedom of five. And then um, at the point zero five level of significance. So we're gonna look that up on our table. So that was five degrees of freedom and 5% level of significance. And we end up right here, 11.07. So that's degrees of, find your degrees of freedom, then go out 11.07. So 11.07, and we're gonna draw that on here. I'm going to say 11.07, and I'm going to shade this just so we know this is our rejection zone. Oh, I need to zoom out. Okay. And now we're going to place our calculated statistic on our chart. So we can place it where it should be. So in this case, it's in the rejection zone, meaning it's far away from the norm, far away from the null. It's far enough that we are willing to accept that well, we could be wrong because it's a small, it's within our constraints. We, we, we accepted that we could be wrong, say, for a 5% level, and this is um, actually much lower than that. So we are going to um, reject because we're inside of the rejection zone. So we are going to reject. Reject HO, which means um, it appears the dice or the die in this case is not fair. Fair. 